Uh, Weston Nordgren next, uh, who has a son who was um, diagnosed when he was 12 months old. And I think, you know, for anyone who's had kids diagnosed later on, the, the, the thought of all the <coughs> effort and anguish that goes into dealing with a, a baby with it is just extraordinary. Um, Weston, the floor is yours. Thank you. Basically, our story starts in Piccadilly Circus, 1966. The blues, the grays, the dark colors are giving way to brighter color, new thought. And there's a couple that had come over for a three-year period to go to school and to work. And that couple came to the Imperial College London. So our roots trace all the way back to this fine institution. And one of the things that we notice is Grandpa Desborough gave birth to Lane Desborough, the father of Night Scout, the person that gave us back something that was taken from us at diagnosis. He was born in 67, and we call him our favorite son. There's just no two ways around it. This man is on the forefront of making our lives better. In fact, at this moment, he is working on the forefront of making our lives better. Your lives, our lives. He's a very brilliant person. In 1988, Lane created Loop Scout and Alarm Scout for nuclear facilities, paper mills, massive major industry. And it was looking for two things. It was looking to monitor closed loop systems for any break or failure. And if anything broke or failed, Alarm Scout would send off an alarm. I don't know if you remember, but a lot of the research that he did in regards to this came after uh, a very sad nuclear disaster in a facility where their panels were so colorful, so many knobs, so many buttons, that when the alarms were flashing, the operators did not take note. They couldn't. And that tragedy here in the UK is what spurred him to write that software. So when he created the software for our community for Night Scout, it was black and white. And everybody said, Lane, where's the colors? Where's the wonderful, vibrant, I'm high, I'm low, this or that? And he had to explain to us why drab is good. That year, his son Hayden was born, and this is the best of times. We're going to look at our community through six children. And his son was born in 98. We have Carson out of Texas. We've got Ella in San Diego, Andrew in San Diego also. Our son was born in 2007, and Evan Kostick, the other co-founder of Night Scout, their little guy was born in 2008. In fact, our son was going into DKA as he was in the hospital holding his little baby. But there's different ways to look at a diagnosis with type 1 diabetes, because a cure is only five years away so you need to manage your expectations on what you're going to do because we've got it covered. Five years from now, you do your shots, you do your injections. Five years from now, you've got a cure. We all move along. We then go and look at other common diseases that we know nothing about. One of the things that we struggle with in the type 1 community is that people outside of our community have no clue. 
What's worse, they may have some knowledge, which makes them even more dangerous. <laughs> Don't want to hear about the cinnamon, the okra. Don't want to hear about your new cleanse. One of the things that Lane did was he wanted to champion, we have to do it now. There's no one else in this room more responsible for improving the life of your child than you. But that software didn't exist yet. I want to introduce you my absolute hero, Derek the Determined. He, he was abandoned at the hospital hours after he was born. He was born premature. Due to the life choices of his birth mother, he had an extensive list of problems. My wife and I have a 29-year-old son, a 25-year-old daughter. They grew up and went off to college. And my wife and I said to each other, so that's it then. We're done. We're just going to spend more time at the country club, lower the golf score, prove our bridge score. But my wife, we didn't know what we were really going to do, but my wife spent eight months, bless her heart, and she worked on me. There's got to be more to life in our mid-40s than what we're currently doing. And so then we embarked on an 18-month process of preparing ourselves for a special needs child because we had decided to do special needs adoption. So we came into it knowing that there were going to be special needs. So this little guy, after going through all of this, withdrawing from crystal meth, fetal alcohol syndrome, he only had 12 months before coming down with type 1 diabetes. So these were the salad days. These were the good times as we worked with this little guy. But it was actually when he became diagnosed, for us it was the worst of times. We sat in the hospital. They were able to stabilize him within 24 hours, of course. But then they kept him for a few days so they could teach us how to keep him alive. And they talked about how to keep him from going high. And we spent two days talking about how to not have him go high. And in the last 15 minutes of the last meeting, before they were going to turn us loose, they talked about lows. Bam. And I remember looking, going, whoa, 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 wait. This is the stuff we should have been talking about yesterday. Because being what his endocrinologist describes as a brittle diabetic and lots of controversy over that topic, it's either you don't know how to do your diabetes properly or maybe it's a real diagnosis. But his endocrinologist called him a brittle diabetic because he could drop 65 points in a five-minute reading in between. Now, we had always been told that if we got a pump, that would be wonderful. Our problems would be over. And my wife at this point, during his diagnosis, is doing tons of research on the online community. In fact, she spends years doing research, meeting people, trying to get the latest and greatest, in fact, we were at a technology summit in San Diego one time where a diabetes educator had taken 18,000 Medtronic pumps, went through the data, and found out pumps didn't work between the ages of 13 and 25. So in regards to the teenagers, they have to have their input in order for those things to work. So as we hear all of this, my wife and I are preparing ourselves for those days, our son just turned nine, and he's just now asking, why me? So in 2008, a cure was only five years away, so we waited. Our doctors told us to wait. 2009, it was still only five years away. Almost, almost. We waited, we waited. Kind of like that carrot on the stick, you keep 
trying to grab it or the gra brass ring, but it never happened. And so this is where I like Charles Dickens. This describes where we were at. We had this beautiful little baby. He had all of these problems, all of this potential. So truly, it was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, and we had nothing before us. So Lane Desborough, they got together with some programmers, and they met together, and they said, we have the knowledge. Let's pull the curtain back. The people that work for the major medical industry, they have a guy who heads a team. Lane was the chief engineer at Medtronic. Brilliant, brilliant man. And when his son was diagnosed, he realized things weren't moving fast enough for the care of his son. So they moved forward and they said, we want our children to be safe and happy. We know how to do it. We are not waiting. We can, we should, we will. And that was our clarion call. So he had the software, but he didn't have the portion that could take the software up into the cloud. And what is the software? The software is to take your CGM, whether it be Medtronic or whether it be Dexcom or whether now, whether it's Libre, and you're able to see it at a distance greater than 15 feet. Because if you have a child whose room is greater than 15 feet, your Dexcom is not going to transmit to your bedroom. So one of you, your husband or your wife, are going to take turns being out of the bedroom. You may not be able to go on date nights anymore. Your family has a new normal. So they told us, prior to us embracing this, they told us, well, you need a pump and you need a CGM. That's going to be the true difference. So we got those two things, and the trend was very helpful, but it still didn't give us back something that had been taken from us. So you had Mr. Kostick, who I call Mr. Impatient, and he loves that name because it was because he was impatient. He wasn't going to wait the years and years that our family waited. And his little guy at four years old was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And within days, he had an online system for the daycare center that they were able to communicate back and forth and within a few weeks, he was able to get it on his laptop. So they were able to remotely converse back and forth. And the next step was mobile. He's got a little bum pack on here with his rig, what we call rig, which is basically your Dex or your Medtronic, your cell phone, and it's going up to the cloud. And it's coming back down on any type of web-enabled browser whether that's a television, tablet, iPhone, whatever. So this little guy was the first one to have this technology, and it's just because John wanted him to be safe. So they were going back and forth with the school, and all of a sudden, Evan was able to do much more. He was able to go at recess, and because they had remote monitoring on the watch, they were able to know that he was fine. If he was a little high, they'd give him a dose. If he was a little low, they were able to bring him up. So this was, when John posted this on Twitter, this is when all the rest of us got involved. Because all our wives saw this, because they had been doing the research. The mother warriors, you know who you are. The ones that keep the children alive. In the online community, I knew one dad prior to Night Scout, one dad. And he and I had figured out we could rig up an old 7 Plus, Dexcom 7 Plus with a baby monitor camera. And if we had an RF switch, and that let us go 30 feet. Because we'd click on that, the camera would go on, and we could see it. That means we could both sit on the same couch for movie night at the house. It was brilliant. But with the advent of this, when we all saw this and our wives told us about it, it changed our lives. The first, our family traveled a lot with our older children. 
So when we adopted, we kept traveling. Well, the first three vacations ended up in Aravax because our son was so unstable in his ability to drop. And the motivation that I personally had, and as I listened to Liz, I heard Liz give information that she keeps in her brain, and I heard her give information that she keeps in her heart. And you can tell where the information is coming from when the person's talking. And my motivation is when we were at Arizona State University, we were visiting one of our, my sister-in-laws. It was a brand new building. All the rooms were soundproof for the lectures. They had a basketball court inside, and my wife, who was the mother warrior, she went to the restroom. Now, I had been paying attention in all of the care. I had been active in all of the care. But this is the day I learned that I was nowhere near her level of care. My little son came running over to get a basketball from me. And he fell to the ground. And he began to seize. And I ran over and I picked him up in my arms. And I needed the glucagon kit. And I didn't know where the restroom was where my wife had that glucagon kit. And he's seizing in my arms. And I'm calling out to dial 911, but no one can hear me. Because although the building is full of people, they're all soundproof. So I'm running with him in my arms to find a phone because I had left my cell phone in the car. And I open the first door I can find, full lecture hall like this, and I say, call 911. So my wife returns. I'm doing the glucagon and realizing I had not paid anywhere near enough attention. And that was the motivation that I would never, ever be in a situation where I would not know his blood glucose. The simplest form, as we talk, you have your transmitter from Dexcom Medtronic, or the Libre transmitter goes to the receiver, to the phone, and down. It's very simple. The medical industry was going to be coming out with this within a few years. It was only three years away. The, the, the cure was five years away. This mobile system was coming from the industry three years. And it kept being three years and three years. And this is why we were not waiting. So you had the birth of Night Scout with just a simple reading. And then, as they, in November 2013, they had a graph. Now, what this allowed us to do, we find that when we travel, we're very distracted. Because you're looking, you're in a new area, you're looking for your train connection, plane connection, where you're going, where you're turning. And so, one of the things that Night Scout helped us to do at a glance was know where our son's blood glucose was, my wife and I at all times. So you would always know where it was. So we went on a week to the beach because we had stopped going on vacations. We had started planning vacations where children hospitals were nearby. We started planning routes that were within cellular service. So, and we discussed the need for a sat phone if we were going to travel. But what we realized is we tried out Night Scout on the beach. We had a week, no problems, no highs, no lows. It was marvelous. We're coming back in the car. We're two hours from home. I say to my wife, let's keep going. We haven't traveled like in three years. Let's keep going. We're all packed. We have everything we need. We only need to wash clothes. Let's just keep going. She doesn't think I'm serious and says, let's do it. She falls asleep. She wakes up. We're two states away from where we were. <laughs> Because we were on a six-state loop. Because we were testing out the new Night Scout rigs. We were doing it for science, but you know that's my, that's my story. So from that very simple, they've actually put enough features into it where you can turn out. When you first set up Night Scout, it doesn't look like that. But there's so many features because so many people across the world have been participating in this that you can actually get it to the point where you're the only missing piece in a closed loop system. 
For example, a closed loop system will dose based on blood glucose. Night Scout will say, you need to dose this much. And then you do it. Or you can just have the basic number. And also, with the advent of new programmers joining us, the options, and as the industry creates new options, people think, well, then that's it then. There's no longer a need for Night Scout. But what happens is people want more than perhaps the main package, and so the developers will put on the additional options. The rig evolution started out quite large. The child would carry it in a bump pack. But then if you notice, you'll come down to here, and I'm not going to talk a lot about X-Drip because of our Night Scout faculty here is so well versed in it. But this little tic-tac box, this little tic-tac box is all the child needs to carry. Doesn't need to carry a cell phone, doesn't need to carry anything else, and that shoots a glucose number up to the cloud and down to the parent's phone. So there's nothing cumbersome. So the people and the programmers that are not waiting are doing the same thing the software developers are doing it. They're refining it. And in fact, we have someone here among us who is quite the celebrity with Xtrip, Tim Omner. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one group. The group started out in, in 2014 in April, and we thought we could help 50 families. Today, we have about 16 and a half thousand families in our group. And worldwide, we've got about 22 and a half thousand. And you'll, this quote from Brandon Arbiter at Tidepool, not having your blood glucose at a glance is like having your speedometer in the glove box. Because I can do this while I'm driving, and I can say, oh, wonderful, I'm 114 steady. Or how many of you notice that I've not only checked my blood glucose, but my son's blood glucose on my watch since I've been talking? So it's very, at a glance, glanceability is the key. The backbone of our project has been these gentlemen here. They are now in two separate areas working on artificial pancreas systems. We've got Ross and Kevin that work for Lane at Bigfoot Biomedical. Remember that name because they're going to be the first ones to market to solve the problem that we have. Now, unfortunately, with the medical industry, is they may not even bring their product to your country. The G4 with Share, which has been in many places, they decided that Canada didn't get it, the UK didn't get it, so our developers worked on the miniaturization. That had the receiver, the blood glucose receiver in the little Tic Tac. It had a cell phone in the Tic Tac, battery, Bluetooth connection, the whole nine yards. Because you are at the mercy of how many people are in your country that perhaps would use that technology. And that's completely whacked. That's completely whacked. When we first had our son, we had to foster him for two years prior to adopting him. And being a foster child, we couldn't put him on our insurance. He had to go on state insurance. And the state of California said, foster children do not get pumps or CGMs. And my wife said, excuse me? <laughs> she ended up going to battle with the titled degreed head of the state of California for pediatric medicine. In fact, she questioned her credentials, something she wouldn't do again today. <laughs> but the mother warrior in her motivated her to have that energy. She says she would handle it differently today because while she did that, that person was unleashing all holy hell on our ability to adopt our little son. And we had to go through five court battles, and we won every single one. But what her 
statement was, this life matters. So not only was our son the first one to get the pump and CGM from the state, and when he got adopted, it was the, oh, it was the great day, because we put him onto our private insurance and he was able to get all of the rest. But other children in our community were then enabled to get the pump and the CGM and have a higher quality of life. Because you don't have to have biological parents in order to have a life that is important and that matters. Our worldwide community provides world-class developers. These people, although they may not work in the medical industry, may work in a different industry where they're doing software and hardware. And their motivation here isn't a paycheck. I'm not gonna stay late and finish this project because I want the quarterly bonus. I'm staying late and finishing this project because this is gonna bless the life of my child. And so you have people across the world all working together for a common good. And the major news media, when the major news media picked up on this, the Wall Street Journal three times, the New York Times, Wired Magazine, and then of course the local, they picked up on this and the people came and the people said, we also are not waiting. We want this improvement in our life. And so Night Scout helps you take back your life from type one diabetes. We were able to travel again as a family and that was a huge thing. We were able to get back into the same bedroom again. And if you have, know anything about married couples, being in the same bedroom is usually a good thing. <laughs> so we went from let's get through this to let's do this. And this is why we are not waiting. And so across the world, we have families sending in photos of their kids in action. We had mothers say, my daughter plays third base in softball. She will collapse in the middle of a game. She started using Night Scout and was able to be in the stands and monitor where the daughter was, was able to give her some carbs if she needed it to. Her daughter was able to not only continue to play the game, but actually became MVP that year. So that's one of the things. And so from grassroots movement to largest T1D Facebook group in the world, that means nothing. Because the only thing that matters is what the people in the group are doing to help each other. And we only have one cost that is associated with Night Scout, and it's pay it forward. When you get set up and are helped set up, that you pay it forward and help someone else. And if you don't have the technical skills, help in any way you can. If you are not a programmer, and we're not, be the babysitter. Go take the kids from the programmer so he can program. And so you have people helping out each other and helping out the families. And the founder of the group here at Jason Adams, his greatest claim to fame isn't the fact he's on the board at Night Scout that he started the group, it's that he's Ella's dad. And she was the motivation for what he does in our group. And as we've discussed, the worldwide membership, there's 24 hour tech support across the world since it's worldwide the support never sleeps because someone's awake in Scotland, someone's awake in Australia, across the US and Canada, and we have 26 country groups where you can get help in your local language. And although it's full featured software, although it's available in 16 different languages with 26 country groups, it's, Night Scout is more than software, it's more than technology. It's anything and everything that meets the need a need that, when fulfilled, helps make life with T1D better. We have international Night Scout faculties. The one we have here in the UK is our premier one. And I'm not saying that because I'm in the UK. I'm saying that because we go around and show them how to do it in the different locations. And the UK group was the group that just went out and started spreading the word on Night Scout, started meeting, started giving presentations. 
And so we love them. One, the Night Scout faculty in Italy even started their own charitable group. And we go out anywhere we can to reach as many as possible, that you know there's an option. And we're called CGM in the cloud because we knew the medical industry was coming through. They're going to have options. So whether you want to set up Share, whether you want to set up Medtronic Connect, whether you want to integrate that, we have four-minute solutions. We have near artificial pancreas solutions. So it's whatever you need. And of course, Charles Dickens, no one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of another. And this is our latest family photo. I'm actually 437th from the left. And I apologize, I had my eyes closed. James Wedding, a quick mention of him. His greatest claim to fame is Carson. She turns 13 next year, uh, next week. And so he gets to be the guy going through this with the teenager. But he's got resources in Kev from our Night Scout faculty who has a, a daughter who's a teenager and from all the rest of it. With a, with a 22 and a half thousand member family, someone, there are thousands, thousands of people that have gone through what you're going through, are going through what you're going through, or, a, or are about to. He actually got mad. He got mad. And he got even madder when there was no solutions available when she was diagnosed. So he did what he could do, and that was starting the Night Scout Foundation. He's the reason that we have the foundation today, and these are the reasons why we have the foundation. Just a quick shout out on the Open APS project that we talked about, Ben and Jason working on. You'll notice that although they've got, although the open APS system started out like this, they've got it now down to that size. The greatest claim to fame here is just improving the life of Andrew. That's why that's important. And where in the world is Lane Desbro now? He's in Silicon Valley, one of the principals of Bigfoot Biomedical, working with the FDA on creating an artificial pancreas system. We still need a cure. I hear it's only five years away. <laughs> but we're not waiting another day, not another minute, to improve the lives of our children. Thank you.